What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video and episode two of Race to Sebring. Now, we're about five days away from September 30th, which is where I'm supposed to put Old Vader to Z06 out on Sebring Raceway and test my abilities and also really get to understand what this car is gonna need as I continue to progress as a driver, but also most importantly, keep this car healthy. Now, if you've seen in my past videos, Vader to Z06 has definitely played real serious in their role of being the Star Wars Vader. It's been in the shop a couple times, had some valve seal issues, some other issues, and today was supposed to be about installing my all brand new Hawk brake pads um, and all blank face rotors across the car, getting the car ready, doing the brake fluid on it, and an oil change. But I went ahead and took it out for a ride this week, hasn't driven in about two weeks, and unfortunately, we have a really serious issue on hand. So let's jump into it. Let's see if we can solve the issue, see if we still have a chance to make it out to the track. Let's get started. So for those of you that have kind of followed this uh, build per se over the last couple of weeks, thank you for subscribing and watching. Obviously, you know that this car had a valve seal issue. Long story short, they removed the cylinder heads to replace some valves and a couple other things that were replaced in the process. The car's been put back together for about a month now and has been driving okay. Um, over the last week or so, I've been getting what would seem like an odd um, low battery type situation where the very first initial startup of the car is a very slow and it, once it does start, it has a really rough idle. You put, turn it off, start it right back up, it usually is back to normal. Obviously, that's not normal, that's not okay. Went ahead and replaced the battery on it because it did leave me stranded the other day. Put the new battery in. Got a false positive on a crank position sensor. Haven't changed it yet, cleared the code. Cars been running fine since then. Fast forward to this week, I've been out of town. I come back and I say, well, I'm getting about a week into this. Let me just take it for a round block, see how it's running, see how it's starting. I've had it on the tender for about a week and a half. Start the car back up. Slow start, again, not nearly as bad, but I noticed a little bit of smoke out the tailpipes. I'm figuring, okay, maybe there's a lot of condensation. The car's been sitting in moisture. I am in Florida. It's been trapped in the garage for two and a half weeks. No big deal. I back it out of my driveway, pretty much make it up my block, which is about a little less than half a mile, maybe, before I get to the stop sign, the car turns off. Um, start the car right back up, starts up, so idling a little rough clear it out a little bit, come up to the next stop sign, boom, turns off again. This time I decide to look at my gauges, see what's going on, my temperature's spiking. I'm at 230 at that point, by the time I you know, pull away from the stop sign, I'm about close to 250. Turn the car off immediately, obviously, because we obviously have an overheating concern. Let the car cool down, bring it back home. Again, not even half a mile from the house. Bring it back home, put it in the garage. First thing I check, obviously, once the car's cooled down is how much coolant I have. I have zilch in my reservoir. Um, the car's been having this weird issue where when I started it up for that very first time, it tends to spit out um, some like rusty water that I keep finding on the ground. Initially, I thought it was just condensation and exhaust pipes, but it's just been too large of an amount to be moisture from the exhaust. So I went ahead um, and I've kind of ignored that, but now obviously as I'm going, getting closer and closer to this, um, no coolant. Now there's a lot more smoke coming out of my exhaust and the idea of that rusted water, mind you, by the way, this car is not on coolant, it is on water, um, might be water from the cooling system. I've gone ahead and taken a look at the outside, exteriorly to see if there's any kind of visible leaks. The first thing I checked, obviously, was the oil, right? The oil at the dry sump level looks fine. Maybe questionable, but still not enough. I'll pull it now and I'll show it to you in a second. Looks okay. I did find some standing water in a certain spot here in my, uh, on my cylinder head on the passenger side. I proceed to pull the plug from there, check the plug. The plug has a little bit of standing water on the threads. Obviously, we're very, very, very close to leaning that there's a cylinder head gasket failure, but I just put this car back together. Not myself, a shop. Um, it's got Cometic head gaskets, which are the multi-layer gaskets, so they're very, very good. Um, so I'm like, what the hell is the potential, potential issue here? So I decided to grab my old handy dandy, torque wrench and just look at the bolt right there next to where the standing water is. And I set my torque wrench at about 22 pounds, which is very, very low for any head bolt. 
and I proceed to see if it'll click immediately let me know I'm at pressure. I was able to do a little less than a quarter of a turn before my torque wrench identified the 22 pounds, which leads me to believe that my shop that worked on this car rushed to finish this car and did not properly torque down certain head bolts. So the goal for today is I'm gonna pull the valve covers off on both sides. I'm going to run through every single head bolt. These are ARP head bolts on this car. I'm gonna run through the ARP procedure to do it, which is you start one through 10, you follow the specific schematics of which ones are labeled one through 10, you get them up to 25 pounds. Then you go one through 10 again, and this time you go up to 50 pounds. And then you do it one more time and you get them up to 80 pounds. So we're gonna follow that procedure now. We're gonna start that process. The car did not run very long, right? Because obviously if I did have my head bolts loose and my car got hot a couple times, there's a good chance that my heads are now warped and need to be decked. I'm not gonna get that far yet. I'm going to start with tightening the bolts. I'm gonna drain the oil, replace the oil with some basic oil just to get the car running. I'm gonna reload coolant into the motor and see if the car is able to idle properly and maintain temp. I do anticipate some more exhaust fumes. I mean, some more uh, smoke out my exhaust because obviously if it has an active leak and stuff, there's probably some in the cylinders right now, but the goal is to see if it responds correctly. If it does, we might be on our way back to getting on track at the end of next week. But that's gonna be a really tight crutch because I still have to fix this. I still have to make sure that this car is properly functioning before I put it up there and really put some temperature in the motor. And then on top of that, I still have to go through all my brake process. I have to do all my new brakes. I have to do new brake fluid for it. So I'm running within a time crunch. So without me rambling anymore, let's jump into this thing and get this thing solved. spark plugs here it's a little hard to see on screen but the spark plug is burning just fine um and like i said i'm not really seeing coolant in my oil but you know another identifier of that is pretty much you know how it's washing out the spark plug uh, one pro is though when i brought this car home and initially led me to the valve seal repair is that my spark plugs actually had standing oil on the threads Long story short, if you haven't seen those other videos, I actually went and removed the intake manifold on the car, um, cleaned that out because I found standing oil there, cleaned it all out, put brand new plugs in it. And uh, by the time I took it to the shop, which was about a week later after that, there was already standing oil on those new plugs again after my intake manifold cleaned. And now I've pulled a couple of these and there is no oil on these where before all of them had a little bit of oil on them. So. On the slight bright side, it does seem like the repairs that were done to the valve seals seems to be working, um, which is good. It's just now determining what the heck is going on. I really hope that it's really just retorquing that head over there on that side where I found the standing water, but also at the same time, like, did that cause more issue by lack of you know craftsmanship from the shop? So. I don't want to jump to those conclusions. I'm really hoping that this is just a small scare. I can get that Titan and the car can run. Um, again, I'm probably gonna have to drive it throughout the week and really see how the car responds and really honestly beat the piss out of it and see if it starts to overheat or anything like that before I feel comfortable rushing into putting this car on Sebring in the condition that it currently stands. So I'm gonna start pulling all the coils pull the valve cover gasket valve covers on both sides off that way i can access the head bolts there um, i may or may not have to loosen the headers to get to some of those but again i'm going to follow the exact process that arp recommends for the one through ten um, there are also some head bolts up under the intake manifold that potentially i'll have to remove the manifold i'm going to start with one through ten if i don't find any that need torquing then you know there's obviously a larger problem at hand but again, that one bolt leads me to believe that either just that bolt's very loose or all of the bolts are very loose. So it could go either way. That bolt's number seven. So I'm not even gonna start there because I wanna start exactly how it recommends, which is one through 10. So I can't just go and tighten that one. I need to start at the beginning and work my way through. So I'm gonna prioritize that side, move to this side um, and get that done. And if we have enough time today, then I'll start working on the brakes if the car seems to be running. 
If the car is not running, there's absolutely no need for me to slap on the new Hawk brakes because the reality is that I'm not gonna take this car back to the shop um, right now. I will more than likely remove the heads myself and do the gaskets myself this time. pretty much loose and removed I am doing this one-handed so a little bit of a pain and oh boy oh boy oh boy do we have milk in there and I know Vader's lactose intolerant so this is not good very very milky oil now I don't know about y'all guys but my car doesn't run on milk so clearly that head gasket's been leaking for some time that's extremely unfortunate because that really decreases the chances that I will get this car on the track anytime this year again I'm gonna just check the torque on the heads just because I found that head bolt far to that back corner to be less than 22 pounds I'm gonna torque them, follow the process. I st it's still not a good outlook for, for Old Vader, the Z06 right now, but if I can get one step closer, drain all that fluid out, put some new fluid in it, see how it runs. Maybe we're somewhere, but it's not looking good right now. So he went ahead and printed out the old process. So like I said, you do one through 10 at 25 pounds. Then you move up, back, start from the beginning, one through 10, 50 pounds. Lastly, you do one through 10, 80 pounds. And then of course, this is 11 through 15. These are up by the intake manifold. I'm not really focused on those just yet. Right now, my emphasis is on one through 10. Make sure you follow here. Don't make up what your one through 10 is. So one is dead in the middle, then right beneath the headers two, back up to three, four is to the side of that. So use that diagram to figure out which ones those are. Um, these header ones might require me to lower the header or loosen it. I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm going to try to see if I can get a socket in there properly. Um, but let's get started for sure. I can reach these up here. Um, just got to work on these lower ones and see what happens. That's side one done. And you would think that uh, I was doing a workout trying to get that 80 pounds on there. 80, 50 started to get tough. 80 was really a pain in the ass to kind of tighten to that point. Just keep in mind, I spoke to the previous the shop that worked on this, put this car back together. Um, the heads were torqued down to what the factory spec calls for, which is 22 degrees. I think you do 90 and then you do 60 or something like that. Just There's a very intricate process to it. But when you have ARP head bolts, you've got to follow the ARP process, which is like I showed you, 25, then 50, then 80. So I'm optimistic that the reason that my valve, my head gases are leaking is because the heads were just not torqued down to the ARP bolt head stud. I mean, to the head bolts sta uh, torque specs. So I've done this side. I'm gonna move on to that side. Once I've gotten both sides done, I'm going to jack the car up, drain all the fluid, because as you can see, there's plenty of milk in the motor. And like I said, Vader is lactose intolerant. So gotta get that out of here. And this is definitely no cow so clean her up get it out of there i'm going to fill it up with a basic oil i'm going to go to o'reilly's or autozone or wherever one of you guys want to sponsor me put some basic conventional oil on this thing let it run get up to temp if it maintains temp and is functional i'll drain it put my Moltool 300v oil that i have here in the motor put it uh, let it sit maybe drive it a couple days this week see how it runs if it doesn't, I will close the hood, leave it here, put it on a trailer, drive up to uh, Tampa, Florida, Ruskin, Florida area, meet up with all my good friends, Phelps Garage, Tom, all those guys, drink a couple beers, have a couple burgers, maybe some pizza, take this thing apart, start it from scratch, but it's not going back for sure, not to the shop that worked on it. And most likely just for financial reasons, it's not going back to any shop. Um, I have a lot of good friends that are mechanics you know, that worked on these things in the, in the past, that's going to help me in case I do need to. Because there is a possibility since they've been, you know, not torqued down properly that there was some slight warping that might've occurred. I'm optimistic that it's not. 
The only way to find out is get this thing back together, fill it with new fluids, and see how it runs. The head bolts are nice and tight. We gotta get rid of the milkshake that we got in the engine right now. I'm not gonna go ahead and use my Motul 300V oil here that I have. What I'm actually gonna do is just put in some good old conventional O'Reilly's up in there, um, 5W30, and get the motor started, obviously after I put some coolant in it, and see if it maintains temperature. Obviously if it has a problem, we're still overheating, more than likely the head gaskets are still having an issue, and we'll know that at the end of that, this car will be parked for a little bit of time. But let's be optimistic. Let's get this thing up on jacks. Let's take out the oil out of it and let's get uh, on with the show. Now the Corvette has specific jacking points and it is kind of recommended to buy the little rubber kits that kind of slide in the slot and to have a long reach low profile jack, which I have. This jack's kind of overkill, extremely heavy, but it does the job. It's not really designed to go anywhere from here, but let's get her jacked up. Um, put the valve cover back on, new oil, new filter. Just put water for coolant for now. I'm not really worried about coolant. I just wanna make sure it's gonna run in idle and not creep up on temp. I'm gonna slide it out of the garage because I don't want to spill anything in case it decides to spill its guts. So let's get it out of the garage and get it its first start. I'm gonna truth. Let's see if it'll keep. It'll for sure start. If it maintains temperature is gonna be the real question. Yeah, no, the smoke is fine. It drank all the water. We need to put more water. Yeah, it's definitely very oil. I'm disconnected. Turn it off. Just press the, the bottom of the power button. Damn, that's just running on seven cylinders, boy. Oh, well. Yeah, that's, damn, thank God it's not something serious. I never plugged that shit in, but it's gonna be hot now, boy. Let me get my gloves on. Woo! Right. It sounded good running on seven cylinders, boy. That's, that's the instant cam kit. Just unplug a ignition coil. Yeah. No. Get ready to push, just in case. Two people are better than one in one car. I mean, this thing is pretty light. Not a little bit, but it's just not an op It's not even an operating temp yet. By this time, yes, the last time I started the car, and I was just like, well, let me just take it for a quick ride. I literally started it, backed out of the driveway, it was still cold. And by the time I got here, it was already overheating. I mean, it is warming up now, let's see. That's normal operating temp though, so we're fine still. bled because it's it's warming up but it's it's staying at 207 and 205 which just seems to be fine i just hope i don't get stuck at this red light for too long and it starts to heat up keeps going back down so though
And we're like, dang, you drive a hybrid? Is that a hybrid Corvette? Yeah, that, you got that, uh, that Tesla swap? Tesla. There's a dude that did. Looks like the wind is cooling it off, so that means water's more than likely not circulating. Yeah, it, it's not hot air outside right now. It, yeah. Like, the air's kind of cool. Well, when we were driving, the temperature was going down, meaning it's getting air, um, which is helping cool it. But more than likely, the water's probably got an air pocket or something like that, so I don't have to bleed the system. I guess it drank a lot more coolant than I thought. This is Driving in, the wind starts to get to it, it starts to cool down. So more than likely, it's just an air pocket in the system. But that's actually really good, 198, 199, if it can maintain that. I don't mind getting it, I don't mind it getting to 200 because that's where it normally plays around. But once it starts going 210 for no reason, we're not really driving, then it's definitely not circulating water properly. the burble tune too bro I just got to downshift it and it'll burble oh you caught me being a youtuber and getting a youtuber thumbnail now it's kind of fake it's kind of true we made a lot of progress yesterday on the car and I waited to shoot the ending clip so I can kind of process my thoughts overnight on the success and the failures of the car obviously we found that according to the shop, they only torqued to 22 pounds and did a 90 degree rotation. But there is another step to that torquing process for the factory head bolts. This car is running the ARP head bolts. Those have their own torque specs. Could that have been the cause? My theory, not being a mechanic, more than likely. If I'm supposed to be at 22 plus a 90 plus a 60, and these are asking for 80, I might be off there on the torques. So everything was torqued down. So far, we took the car for quite a few heat cycles yesterday, took it out, beat the piss out of it every single time, and checked the oil when I got back. The oil still looks good. Coolant levels are fine, maintaining temperature. Um, one little thing I learned now is my coolant temp sensor, not the actual sensor, but the harness that connects to it, the plug is actually damaged. And basically when I'm going on wide open throttles, it's shifting inside the sensor and I'm losing coolant, uh, coolant signal. So that needs to be repaired, not in this video, of course. But the real question is, obviously we've been making this series, well, the idea was to make this series and get to the track next week. But um, after giving it some thought last night, this is not the typical YouTube story where I'm gonna go ahead and push this car to blow up so I can get more views or clicks. This is a reality story here where Unfortunately, I want to get out there, but even though I did fix, quote unquote, fix this fish issue, it needs more time. I need more time to drive the car, go through some more heat cycles, do for longer durations. These heat cycles were just, you know, a few blocks away, high RPM rips, bring it back. Um, I need to drive the car. And the last thing I want to do is force the hand, drive it up to Sebring, blow it up you know and cause some real damage either really have some cool a lot of coolant flow in there maybe dramatically overheat the car or even worse the coolant slips out gets in my back tires i lose control and i damage the car physically so i'm not gonna make it out to the track next week i, I do want to keep the race of sebring live because um, i am trying to push for any kind of track session i can get this year it may or may not be sebring we're looking to see if there's other options for me this year um, and I'm just gonna continue. I have all my brakes back there. I have brand new DTC 60s, uh, blank face rotors I need to go on the car. I just ordered my tow hook, so I'm gonna have the front and back installed. And I'm just gonna continue getting the car dialed in and ready to go so we can have a good time on track as safe as possible. And that'll give me some time to test the motor and make sure that that's the case. There is a large chance that what I did was only a temporary fix. And as it gets through a, a true heat cycle, it'll slowly start to seep again and I will have to pull the heads and put new gaskets on. But I don't know that for sure just yet. Um, and that's why I don't wanna go and really guarantee that something happens out on Sebring Raceway. So we're gonna keep her parked here for a minute. I'll probably drive it throughout this week. And then I'll start working on the other stuff, keep testing it, making sure everything is happy. It does have like a standard 5W30 conventional O'Reilly's oil in it right now. I'm gonna, let it, I'm gonna let it stand there for another session or two that I take it out for a ride. And then I'm gonna drain all that oil. If it looks good, I'll put my oil back in it, the Motul 300V, um, 
and look at and I'm gonna add some water water to the coolant and stuff like that and kind of see how it goes from there but if you guys watch this far please like subscribe share the video the views do help the subscribers do help to try to get to the point where I can at least monetize the channel make a couple bucks to keep this car running um, this is all being funded by me and my extra time that I have as being a new as a, as a new dad and also a full-time uh, marketer so see you in the next video guys peace